Hello and welcome. So let's jump right in and launch our Premiere Pro. And uh, after the splash screen loads up, we'll be presented with this main window. And basically in here, you have your home section where you can find all your recent projects that you can quickly access here. You can also open projects and look for them this way, or you can create a new project. Also worth mentioning is here under home, you have a learn section where there's plenty of tutorials that you can dive deeper in. And uh, we're actually gonna be covering a lot of this stuff into this one video. So a lot to pack into this 20 minute video, but uh, trust me, by the end of this, you will know how to get started and edit your own sequence. So the very first thing that we're gonna do is at the top here, you can see that we can input our project name. So I'm just gonna say tutorial for this one, and then we can pick a location for this. And uh, this pop-up window will come up and we can navigate to wherever we want. We can also create a new folder. And uh, now we can also choose that folder to create our project file in. And that's basically all you need to get started. So we're gonna click on create, and this is gonna open up Premiere and all of its four main panels. Now, something I wanna mention real quick, some of the panels could be in a different place depending on what kind of workspace you have. So go under window, workspace, and if you wanna go ahead and select editing, that is the one that I'm gonna be using. It doesn't change what the panels contain and what they're called, but it does change where they're positioned on your work area. So this is just to accommodate different needs depending on what you're doing in Premiere. So the first panel we're gonna be talking about is the project panel. And as you can see, Premiere is already telling us that we need to import media into our project to start. So we're gonna do exactly that. And there's two ways of doing this. So you can either double click on your project panel and this is gonna open up a window that allows you to browse to the folder that you want to import or the files that you wanna import. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel on this because I prefer to do this with Finder or just a folder open directly since I usually have those open with the files that I wanna use. And from there, I can just directly drag and drop that into the project panel. And that doesn't change anything. It's the same thing. Uh, most of the time I already have it open, so this is easier. And when you're dragging entire folders into Premiere, it's gonna turn those folders into bins, which essentially is the same thing. It's just Premiere's version of folders, I guess. So if we open up this footage bin, you can see that it's nicely displayed with thumbnails. And a really neat feature in Premiere is that when you go over these clips, thumbnails, you can actually scroll through them and preview what is inside these clips. So once you found the clip that you are interested in, that you're looking for, just double click on it, and this will open it up in your source monitor. As we start to open bins up, there are these sort of folders, things could start to maybe get cluttered, like you wanna go back to your main project panel where you have everything, and now you have this folder. So I'm gonna show you a quick way to drag these panels around and organize them exactly how you want. So simply by grabbing the tab, so just by clicking and dragging from the tab of the panel, we can move it around. And as I do this, you can see that I can have it as a pop-up to be its own thing, or I can even drag it around and dock it wherever these uh, blue areas appear. So this is a nice way to arrange Premiere's UI to exactly fit your needs. And once you have a second monitor and all that, this all comes in really handy. So a lot of customization, but just want you to be aware of that because every single panel in Premiere can basically do that. So that's really handy. Also, a good time to mention is that you can close panels and sometimes you can also close panels on accident. And you can hit this sort of menu icon in each panel and you can close panels that way. But let's say that you want to open it back up. So. For this, we can go under window and we can actually check back whatever panel is missing that we want. So now that we have our selected clip in our source monitor, I want to create a sequence from this clip. But before I do that, I wanna go under metadata and I wanna check the frame rate of this clip just to make sure that it's the frame rate that we want for our entire sequence because whenever we're creating a sequence from a clip, it's actually going to create that sequence based on the settings of that clip. So as you can see here, 23.976 as a frame rate works for me. And before dragging this entire clip into my sequence, I'm actually gonna wanna select only a portion of this clip instead. So maybe I wanna get rid of just the beginning here and uh, I want it to start from this point on. So I'm gonna hit I on my keyboard and this is gonna sit on in point for the video. And then I'm gonna scroll through here and maybe I don't want this uh, later part of the clip. I just want it to stay here. So at this point in time, I'm gonna hit O on my keyboard and that's gonna set an out point. So now you can see that we only have a portion highlighted of the 
entire clip. So once we've done that, we're able to drag that portion into our timeline. And there's a few ways of doing this, but the way I like to do it is just grabbing that image and drag it on top of my timeline area. So this is gonna create a new sequence, as you can see here, as well as in the project panel, and it has the same exact settings as our clip. And we can actually verify that by going under sequence, sequence settings, and you can see that everything is exactly the same as our clip. So just going back on our timeline here, I can hit spacebar and that's gonna preview what we have in our sequence. And you can see that the beginning and end of that clip isn't there because it's just a section that we wanted. So now I'm noticing that there is a few extra clips that we don't really need. So what we can do to just get rid of them is select the first one and then hold shift and select the last one. And then you can delete that section by hitting delete. So this won't delete the physical files on your computer. It's just gonna get rid of them from your bin in Premiere. And this is just gonna clear up some space for us. And of course, if you wanna select multiple individual ones and all of that, it's basically the same function as any other folder on your computer. So let's go ahead and look at another clip that we can add. And once we find it, we'll do the same exact thing. So we'll double click on it, bring it in the source monitor, set in and out points, and then just drag it into our timeline. But let's say that this time, I don't wanna drag both the audio and the video of that clip. I only wanna drag the video portion of that clip. So if you notice below the preview area in the source monitor, there is sort of like a film strip icon right next to a waveform icon. And if you just click and drag from the film strip icon and drag it into your timeline from there, it will only bring in the video portion of your clip. And instead, if you click and drag from the waveform icon, it will only bring in the audio from that clip. Next, we're gonna look at how to trim clips in your sequence. And there's a few simple ways of doing this. And one of the fastest ways is to go to either ends of the clip and dragging it in and this will shorten that clip. Now I'm gonna hit Command Z or Control Z on PC. That's gonna undo what we just did. So I can show you another way of trimming a clip. So we're gonna bring up the razor tool and you can do this by hitting C on your keyboard, which is the shortcut for it. Or you can go on this side toolbar here and you can select the razor tool. Now with this selected, you can actually click on the clips and make cuts. If I go back to my selector tool by hitting V on my keyboard, I can do the same thing that I did earlier. I can trim them, I can move them around even. So the razor tool is just a quick way to make cuts in the clips without deleting anything. And so these are pretty much the two main tools that you always use in your timeline. So the selector tool, which is your regular cursor, which is used to select things and move them around, and your razor tool that will make cuts in your clips. So now another thing that I would like to show you is how to apply transitions. Now again, like most other things, there's multiple ways of doing this, but let's take a look at the fastest way to do this. So with the clip selected, you can hit Command D on your keyboard on your Mac or Control D on a PC, and this will add what's called a default transition. And usually the way it's set up out of the box, Premiere's default transition is a simple fade. Now the other way of adding transitions, which is a little bit longer, is by going under your effects panel. Now this is uh, located down here here for me, but again, if your workspace is different, it might be in another place. And in the effects panel, let's go on the search bar and we can just type in cross. And this will bring up this crossfade transition, which is under the video transitions category. And you can just drag and drop this onto whatever end of your clip that you want to fade. Without having to type anything in the search bar, we can erase this and go to our regular dropdown and go back to that folder of video transitions. And you can see that there are many other transitions in here. And another fun one that I like to use is the wipe transition, since it's a really cool one to know in case you want to do any before and afters or anything of that nature. I think this transition is pretty handy. But between those two, those are my go-to transitions unless I'm doing anything fancier. But just like that, any other effect, we can type it in this effects control panel and look it up that way, or you can just navigate to it following the folder structure. So play around with all of these and see what each of them do. And if you don't like a transition, you can always select that transition and hit delete. And so another cool thing is that you can also apply this transition in between different clips that are touching each other. And what this will do is it will fade those clips together. So I can play this and you can see what it's doing. It's just fading the two clips and then fading the last clip out to black. So since we talked about the effects panel, let's start applying some effects. Now it might not be effects like explosions or anything like that, but it's still pretty cool stuff. So back in our effects panel search bar, I'm gonna type in blur. 
and I'm gonna grab this Gaussian blur here and I'm gonna drag and drop it onto one of my clips. And this effect is, again, just one example of many effects that Premiere Pro has. Basically, as the name suggests, this blurs uh, your clip. But right now, we're not seeing much of a blur. And that's because any effect that you add to your clip in your timeline is controlled by the effects controls panel. And here we can see all the settings that we can tweak for this effect. So we can see that we have this slider over here for the amount of blurring that we want to apply. And you can see that as I drag and increase this number, the more blurry our image gets. Now we can also add a tint effect. And so back in our effects panel, I can type in tint, drag and drop into that same clip. And now if we go back to our effects controls panel, you can see that we have both of our effects and they're sort of stacked on top of each other. And this is actually important because the order in which you stack your effects can actually change the way that they look just because of what effect is being dealt with first. And basically Premiere treats these effects from top to bottom. So now that we have these two effects, in here, let's say that we want this opening shot to start off blurry and then come into focus and also start desaturated and come into color. So we want to essentially animate these effects. And a simple way to do this is to go back to our parameter that we were changing to increase the blurriness and click on the stopwatch icon next to it. And what you're going to see is that this icon is now going to turn blue, meaning that we have activated and we have keyframes and it's going to create this diamond shaped point here in the effects controls panel timeline. And that's essentially our first keyframe that we created. Whatever value it is on this keyframe at this point in time, it's what's showing on our timeline. And as you're noticing, this is almost like another secondary timeline that we have for just this clip that we're working on that's selected that's containing our effects. So we're gonna move forward in time once we reach a point where we want the blurriness to end and we can just bring that blurriness down to zero. And as soon as I change that value, you can see that it automatically creates a new keyframe. So as I scroll through here, you can see that it goes from blurry to sharp. And now, as you can see, this isn't the only property that has a stopwatch next to it, meaning it's not the only property that you can animate. And that's the nice thing about Premiere is that just like After Effects, anything that has a stopwatch next to it, you can animate and control. So you can add keyframes just like we did for the blurriness. We can animate also any other parameter that has a stopwatch, such as the amount of tint under our tint effect. And so we can do the same thing by bringing the value of 100% tinted all the way down to 0% tinted. And now we can see that in the opening, we start off blurry and desaturated and the image comes into sharpness and into color. Now we can also grab these effects. We can copy and paste them onto another clip. We can also select by clicking and dragging with our selector tool in our timeline and make a selection of multiple clips. And if I go in my effects controls panel, we can simply just even double click on whatever effect we wanna to add to all those clips. And that's another way of doing that for multiple clips. But let's say that we want to make an adjustment that affects all of the clips and we don't want to necessarily have to change those values for every single clip anytime that we want to make a change. And this is where adjustment layers come in. And basically adjustment layers are an empty layer that can hold effects and a bunch of other information that will affect any layer below it. So if we go back to our project panel here, we can click on this icon that says new item and we can actually select adjustment layer among other elements that you can create. So now click OK in this box and then it creates this new element in your project bin. And now all I have to do is just drag and drop it onto my timeline on top of my clips. And then if I stretch it over all of my clips, well, nothing happens, but that's exactly what we want because what we just created is a transparent video layer essentially. So what we need to do is add an effect to this adjustment layer so that all of the clips underneath it are gonna be affected by that effect. Now, instead of adding an effect from my effects controls panel, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip my toes a little bit into color grading since that can make also a big difference on how your footage looks and how your project looks. So under window, I'm actually gonna change my workspace from editing to color. And this is gonna open up the Lumetri color panel. And so with my adjustment layer selected, now I can start to make some changes into the Lumetri panel and it will affect all of the clips underneath that adjustment layer. So this is great for making some color grading changes and I'm gonna show you just a few main things that can actually fast track you into getting some really cool looks. So one of the main things that we're gonna do is import a LUT file. 
or LUT file. So a LUT stands for a lookup table. It's basically a preset for color grading, and it's essentially a file that contains a bunch of information that changes how your footage looks. And to show you exactly what this does, I'm gonna go under this creative tab under the Lumetri color panel, and I'm gonna import a LUT from this drop-down window. Now, once it's added, it might be a little bit too intense. So I'm gonna use this intensity slider to kind of decrease the effect of this LUT. And this is also a big reason why, if you noticed, I didn't use the LUT import feature in the basic correction tab because there isn't an intensity slider for that LUT in there. So it's nice to have a little bit of extra control when it comes to that. Now, in this basic correction, what we do have are just some Pretty self-explanatory controls, such as the exposure. You know, you can bump this up if your footage is a little bit dark or underexposed. You can add or decrease contrast. Sometimes I like to bring down the highlights a little bit if I'm dealing with some really bright areas in my clips that might be a little distracting. And of course, you can lower the shadows to add contrast, or you can even lift the shadows up to get a little bit more detail from the darker areas of your image. I'm not gonna dive too much deeper into this because we're not really trying to do a color grading masterclass right now, but just by playing around with these functions and seeing what everything does, it can give you a really good head start when it comes to color correcting and color grading your clips. And keep in mind, we are making these adjustments to the adjustment layer. So to actually see what this is doing, we can go to this sidebar over here where we have our video and audio tracks labeled. And you can see this uh, eye icon that I can toggle on and off. And that's basically gonna activate and deactivate that specific track. And in our case, this track contains our adjustment layer. So we're essentially seeing a before and after of our color adjustments since all of it is contained in our adjustment layer. So this is a good time to mention that you can basically do the same thing for audio. So you can mute a track with this M button or you can hit this S button, which stands for solo and that will isolate that track. So this is great for sound design or when you're adding different things and you really wanna dial in one specific sound instead of hearing your whole mix. Or maybe you can even take some sounds out temporarily by muting them and these features alone come really handy when it comes to adding and editing audio in Premiere. Since we're still in the color workspace, anytime I select another clip in my timeline, if I go back to my Lumetri color panel, now I'm just affecting that single clip. So this is a very typical structure when it comes to maybe going into the individual clips to do some color adjustments for color correction and then adding an adjustment layer on top of everything for your final grade or sort of like the overall look that you're giving to your project. So we're gonna move on from color for now and we mentioned audio, so let's add a song to this sequence. So I'm gonna find the soundtrack that we imported earlier with the rest of my files in one of these folders or bins and I'm gonna drag and drop it into my sequence. Now, one important thing that I'm gonna mention is that if I drag and drop another element over anything else that's already existing in my timeline, it will overwrite and delete that element. Okay, so if I go to the right here, back where our track labels are and I double click on that audio track where that song is, you can see that it expands that track so that we can now see the waveform of this audio layer. And this is really useful, especially when you're editing to the beat of a track. And if you can see here, there's sort of like this thin line in the middle here. And you can see that if I click and drag this line, I can bring it up and down. And this is basically the volume of the track. So if I bring it up, it makes it louder. And if I bring it down, it makes it quieter. But what if we wanna fade the song up or maybe even making it softer in certain points and louder in other moments? And this is where keyframes come in handy again. So we can go under the effects controls panel once again, and we can expand the volume property of this audio layer. And we can make a keyframe at this point in time where we want the music to come up. And then we can scrub to the beginning and we can scrub this number all the way down so that it's completely quiet. And now if I preview this, you can see that the audio is fading up. You can also visually see this with our audio meter here. And we can keep adding keyframes in the effects controls panel or even in the timeline panel itself by control or command clicking on that line to create a new keyframe that way. And this way we can modulate our audio to go up and down depending on what we want. So now I think this is a good time to add a title to our sequence. And I'm gonna go over here to my toolbar and I'm gonna click on this T icon, the type tool. So now if we go and hover over our program monitor, you can see that our cursor actually changes. So now if I click on here, we can start typing a text. So that's great, we have our text. We can even grab our selection tool. We can move our text around in our program monitor. And of course, in our timeline, we can grab this new element, this like pink layer that you see created here. And we can also move that backward and forward in time in our timeline as well as up and down the different video tracks depending on what you wanna show this text over. 
So pretty straightforward. And now because it is a layer in our timeline, the same thing applies as anything else. So we can add effects to this text, we can add transitions to this text. And now to change the properties of the text, such as font and other parameters, you can find those things under the effects controls panel once again by expanding this tab that says text. But a much better way and newer way to handle text in Premiere is by using the essential graphics panel. And we might not have that open, so let's go under window and check essential graphics. So in here, we want to select edit and go and click on your text layer. And now we can modify it with all these controls, which are pretty self-explanatory. Just explore and see what everything does. If you've ever used Word document, anything like that, any text tool, it's basically all the same stuff. Down here under appearance, we have the fill so we can change the color. We can also add a stroke, a background and a shadow by activating these checkboxes and modifying those controls there. And that is everything. That is our 20 minutes. Now, obviously, there is a lot more to explore within Premiere, but this should be enough to hit the ground running and even start practicing and doing. So with that being said, I hope this was sufficient in just launching you into this very exciting journey of editing. And I hope this helped. If it did, give this video a like and share it with someone that you think also needs to learn Premiere. Subscribe for more content like this, as well as filmmaking breakdowns and After Effects tutorials. Would love to have you here. So definitely subscribe and hit the bell. And also check out my website at chrisgart.com. It has a little bit more of an organized structure as far as the videos. And also we have a ton of digital packs that really help your edits and effects stand out. And lastly, my Patreon. If you want to get practice footage, head on over there. There's a bunch of footage that you can actually get for free. So beyond the sample media that you saw that comes with Premiere, you can actually get other kinds of drone shots and even some red files to uh, practice some color grading on. And that is all available on my Patreon. So definitely check that out as well. So those are all some great ways of supporting me. I really appreciate any of that. But more importantly, thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Chris Trudy for Chris Carr, and I'll see you next time.